I just like you to just take a few minutes to just speak to your Lord. Let it be between you and Him. Through him and tell Him all the gratitude that you have for Him, for all that He has done for you, for all that He's doing in your life. Hallelujah. Just raise your voice up unto the Lord and just glorify His holy name. Heavenly Father, we thank you, O Lord, for this opportunity to come before you today, Almighty Jehovah, to, to soak in that which you have to give unto us, Heavenly Father. We pray that as each one of us has been destined to be here, Heavenly Father, that we may not miss out, Almighty Lord, on that which you have in store for us, Heavenly Father. May we take in everything that you give out tonight in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. We have prayed, trusting and believing. Amen. Hallelujah. CLJ Maranatha, good evening. How are you doing today? You're looking lovely. Amen. Amen. Let's just brighten up the mood. Just go to one person and just say hello. It's good to see you in the presence of the Lord. Amen. Spread the love. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. And if you may, after that, you may have your seats in the presence of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. You may have your seats. Hallelujah. I'd like to welcome all of you to our Wednesday midweek service. Hallelujah. Especially our online viewers from wherever you're watching us from around the world. We are grateful that you have made time to come and fellowship with us. Hallelujah. We also like to welcome any visitors. If there's anybody fellowshipping with us for the first time, let me see by a show of hands. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Glory be to God. And to also remind all of you that we are still going on with Operation Two Souls. Amen. We want to make sure that we bring someone to a Sunday service every week that you come to church. So if you haven't already been doing that, let me encourage you. You still have a few more days to Sunday. So get out, get courageous, pray. I'm sure the Holy Spirit shall strengthen you. Amen. And make sure that you come with someone to church for the Sunday services. Now we are live exclusively on youtube amen so if you have anybody who's waiting for us on facebook kindly spread the word and let them know that we are exclusively on youtube for our midweek service today as you all know we have several media pages that you can find us across instagram you can find us on youtube you can find you find us on facebook we're under the handles of prophet joel lutuka that's on facebook and salma lutuka hallelujah you can also find us under the same handles on Instagram. And also on YouTube, you can find us exclusively on Prophet Joel Lutuka. Hallelujah. So if you haven't already liked, shared, subscribed to our pages, I urge that you please do so. And on Facebook, you can also find us under CLJ Maranatha. You can follow us for lots of content for Christians. Hallelujah. That can help you get through the week. That can help strengthen you. Hallelujah. Amen. There's a lot of content from the man of God. Services that he has already been, um, already has uh, preached on. That you can go back to in case you didn't get something. And I'm sure that you will get something new as always. Hallelujah. Amen. Our website is also live and running. Amen. You can find us on www.cljmaranatha.org. So if you haven't visited us on the website, can you please do so? And I'm sure it will be uplifting unto you. Our order of service, um, we normally have our week, midweek services from 6 p.m. every Wednesday. 
at the main sanctuary and we're live on Facebook on YouTube sorry for that and also on Sunday we have our Sunday services which start at 9 a.m. in the morning hallelujah I'd like to personally appreciate all the partners of CLJ Maranatha and all the stewards hallelujah may we clap for our partners for those of you who are here thank you so much you are such a blessing for the work that you're doing standing with the man of God we really appreciate it moving on the assignment that he has been given by God himself we we thank you for standing with him and if you would like to partner with us in this great cause you can call us through our ministry lines which are available on our social media pages and our website and we'll be able to guide you on how you can partner with us hallelujah are we all excited for this midweek service amen 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 so as we prepare to get today's word let us also prepare to give unto the lord hallelujah amen 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 i'm always excited when it comes to giving because giving is also worship praise god amen it shows obedience yes but it also shows how much you revere the Lord, how much you love him for everything that he has done for you, everything that he continuously does and everything that he will do in your life. It's an expression of gratitude, hallelujah, unto the Lord. So with that in mind, let us be cheerful as we stand and prepare to give unto the Lord. Amen. I'll give you a few minutes to prepare your offering. Amen. And as you prepare your offering, I'd just like you to take a few seconds to just speak to that seed. Just speak to that offering. Give it an assignment. Hallelujah. Amen. Because when we give, we give with purpose. Amen. Heavenly Father, we come before you to glorify your holy name, to thank you, O oh Lord, for this opportunity to come before you today, Almighty Jehovah. We don't take it for granted that we have made it here, Heavenly Father. And that is why we are giving thanks unto you, Almighty Jehovah. We pray that, Heavenly Father, you may accept this offering, Heavenly Father, may it be as a sweet-smelling aroma unto you, O Lord. For everything that you have done for us and everything that you shall do, we are truly grateful, Almighty Jehovah. Heavenly Father, we pray that you may accept it, O Lord, and continue to adorn us with your grace and your favor now and forevermore, O Jehovah. Thank you, Lord, for it is in Jesus' mighty name that we have prayed. Amen. And amen. You may come and give. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 So we can, we can dance for the Lord even as we give our Hallelujah. offering. There is something that makes me come into your presence. There is something.
Hallelujah. Just lift up your voice and praise Him and worship Him because He is worthy of our praise today. He is worthy of our worship. He is worthy of all adoration. He is worthy of all goodness. He is good. He is merciful. He is faithful. We lift up His name in this sanctuary this evening and we declare that you alone are God. We worship you, Almighty God. We lift up your name, Jehovah God. There is no one like you, O God. You reign in majesty. You reign in glory. You reign in our lives. You reign over Kenya. You reign over this atmosphere, Lord. We give you praise. We worship you. We lift up your name. We worship you. We honor you, Lord. You are Alpha and Omega. We worship.
bless your name. We give you glory. We give you adoration. We thank you for another time that you enabled us to gather together. We thank you because your purpose to do us good. We give you honor and be glorified, be magnified in this place. In Jesus' name we pray. Somebody say amen. Walk to somebody. Tell them it is good to see you today. Walk around and say hi to somebody. Tell them you look wonderful. Tell them good to see you. Welcome to church. to be good to us today and last Wednesday we said that God has enabled us by his wisdom to be able to grab every opportunity right did we say so we say there is an opportunity that can be grabbed in the evil days and whenever there is an opportunity we take hold of that opportunity so that we may make our God known so, so. today again God has privileged us I want us to talk about the peace of God the peace of God let's read from the book of Mark chapter 4 Mark chapter 4 let's read from verse 35 Mark chapter 4 verse 35 and the Bible says that day when evening came he said to his disciples let us go over to the other side mm. leaving the crowd behind they took him along just as he was in the boat there were also other boats with him a furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped jesus was in the stern sleeping in a, on a cushion the disciples woke him and said to him teacher don't you care if we drown he got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, Quiet, and be still. Then the wind died down, and it was completely calm. Amen. Amen. Before I continue, I want to celebrate my father. Uh, he's a man that has, by the grace of God, has enabled me to stand as I stand today. And uh, God sent to me a man, and I'm proud of my father daily. So, bless in the name of the living God, we celebrate our father and our mom. Let's celebrate better than that. I celebrate my mom as well for continually supporting me, teaching me, and praying for me. God bless you, mom. God bless you, papa. In Jesus' name. Let's read in, in, in John chapter 14, verse 27. John chapter 14, verse 27. And the Bible says, Peace I live with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. You heard me say I am going away and I am coming back to you. If you loved me, you will be glad that I am going to the Father. For the Father is greater than I. Amen. The last verse, let's read from the book of Philippians chapter 4 verse 6. Philippians chapter 4 verse 6 the Bible says 
Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition, with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. Continue the last verse. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. We bless the name of the living God. Uh, today I would love us to talk about peace for a very short while. I don't want to keep us very long. But I desire us to hear what God has to do in this particular hour. There's one thing that I come to realize is that very much important. That one thing I've seen people try to struggle and try to achieve in this world is not money. And I've, try, I've, I've seen people trying to look for one particular thing and you look into the houses and the lives of the big people, those that have money, those that don't have money, there is one thing that they are always looking for and it is peace. Do you agree with me? Because there is a possibility of somebody looking for money. There is a possibility for somebody looking for land and other things. But eventually you realize that somebody can have money, somebody can have or achieve greater things that they desire, but the absence of peace makes everything that they have achieved a total meaningless meaningless right so lack of peace it can be can bring people into a place of suffering and a place of struggle but priests there's one thing about priests that even in the lack of things with peace you can find an, an a stillness or an establishment in the lives of people hallelujah and where we read in the book of mark chapter 4 verse 35 i want to go to go directly media please project the scripture Mark chapter 4 from verse 35. I just want to go to the place that it says, A furious storm. A furious storm, verse 37. A furious squall came up and the waves broke over the boat so that it was nearly swamped. Continue. And Jesus was in the stern. In other words, in the deep of the ship. The other side of the ship, Right? within the same ship, but there was a place that Jesus was in, and the Bible said that he was sleeping on a cushion. The disciples woke him and said, teacher, do you not care if we drown? And that was the prayer of many people because the disciples said, you do not care. Jesus, don't you care that we are drowning? And that is the thing that many people continue praying day in, day out, that God, don't you care about my life? Don't you care about my marriage? Don't you care about my children? You are in this boat, but don't you care what is happening into my life? Don't you care that I don't have finances? Don't you care that things are not working into my life? It is a prayer that they were praying to Jesus, asking. You may see just like a certain but it was a prayer. God, don't you care? And it is a prayer in many people's life, a prayer of God, don't you care that I come to church? Don't you care that I serve and the things that are happening in my life are not right? Hallelujah. It is a prayer that many people pray and ask God questions. And some of us even here right now, this is the same thing that they're asking God. Don't you care? Don't you care about our nation? Don't you care about ABCD, about our lives? But this is what Jesus said, continue. Verse 39, he got up, rebuked the wind, and said to the waves, be quiet. He said, quiet. There is a version, look for King James. The version of King James says that peace, peace, and then says be still. So before there is stillness, there is a need for peace. Hallelujah. There is a need for peace before there is stillness and peace is very much important for our lives. Let's jump into the book of 14, uh, John chapter 14 verse 27. Jump, John chapter 14 verse 27. The Bible says that peace I leave you, I live with you. My peace, my peace I give you. I do not give you as the world gives. Do not let your house be troubled and do not be afraid. So the Bible says in this particular, Jesus is talking to the disciples and saying, I leave you, peace I leave you. And he says, my peace, my peace. He had to be very much specific on the kind of peace that he's living. And he says, not as the world gives peace. So there is a peace that the world gives. There is a way that the world gives peace to men. 
and he tells them you can be able to achieve peace in A, B, C, D in a certain way. By doing so, by having this and that, you can be able to achieve peace. But Jesus says, the peace that I'm giving you is not the kind of peace that the world gives. But there is a kind of peace that I'm giving you that is beyond the world. That is beyond money and the things in this world and is a peace from above. Are we understanding? And this peace, he said, it has an ability to be able to cause your heart not to be troubled and not to be afraid. In other words, there is the presence of fear and trouble in your heart is a meaning that there is an absence of peace. Are we understanding? And there is a peace of Jesus that does not come with resources. The peace of Jesus does not come with things. As we read in the book of Mark, you realize that in within the same boat that they were drowning, even though Jesus was in the same boat, even though Jesus was in the same boat, so there was still a, a storm. There was still trouble in the same boat. But Jesus declared, let there be peace. What I want to say is that the, 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 the absence of, the absence of trouble does not mean that you don't have peace. Or rather to say that storms around your life does not mean that Jesus does not care. Are we understanding? But the thing is, even in the presence of trouble, there is peace that can come into your life. There is peace that can come in a nation. In the presence of what? Trouble. But Jesus says, the kind of peace that I give surpasses the peace that, give, that is given in this world. And he continued to say, even as we read in the book of, in the book of uh, Philippians chapter 4, do not be anxious about anything. Go to verse 7. And he said that the peace of God, there is the peace of God, and this is the place that I want us to write something so that you can have something to go home and write. There are three kinds of peace. And number one peace is the peace from God. Peace from God. You can write the peace of God. This kind of peace from God is a peace that is as a gift, right? The peace from God, it is coming from God as a gift. Number two, there is a peace with God. And this is the peace that comes with Jesus' works. Redemption. What Jesus did on the cross, it is the way to make us come in the place of peace. It is a relational peace. Are we writing something? It is a relation. So number one is what? Peace from God. Number two is peace with God. So this is a relational, relational peace whereby it is by you what was damaged before you knew Jesus. Now there is an amendment and now you are related together. You are back together with God and there is peace with you with God. This is a relationship God through Jesus Christ is afforded by Jesus' work. So Jesus that is the one that has availed this kind of peace by the forgiveness of our sins. So, so, and the last, the, last, the, last, the last kind of peace is the peace of God. This is now we are talking, what you're talking about. The peace of God which transcends all understanding and will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. So what basically the Bible says in this place is that there is a peace of God and this one is the unruffled severity of the infinite. This one is from the eternal compassion of God. This is just the absolute thing about God, the contention of God, that God himself is okay and it comes from the sovereignty of God and okay and, 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 and happy, a happy God. Are we together? And it says this peace of God has one thing, it surpasses an understanding. So, there is something that the Bible says there is an all understanding. It means there is different types of understanding. Are we understanding, people of God? There are different kinds of understanding, but the Bible says when you put all those understanding together, there is a peace that surpasses them. And it says the peace of God that transcends all understanding will guard your hearts. So this particular peace, the peace of God has an ability to guard your heart and guard your mind. Right? And he says, guard your mind and guard your hearts and guard your mind in Christ Jesus. Are we hearing? So what happened is that there is a peace that has an ability to stand in your life and specifically in your heart, in your mind, to guard your mind, to guard your heart. From what? 
from anxiety. Because the previous verse says that do not be anxious. Do not be anxious about anything. But in everything, pray. In everything, do what? Pray. So everything about your life. And the other version says that make known. Make known. Everything of your, about your life, make it known to your God. Let God know everything about you. And it says in different dimensions of prayer, which is by supplication, by thanksgiving, you know. And it says that the peace of God shall guard your heart. It shall guard your heart. So what God gives you after you begin to pray is a peace. And this peace has the ability to guard your life, guard your heart, and guard your mind from the place of being anxious. Because God cares about your life. God cares about everything about your life. So peace is not the absence of storms, but it is peace that comes to guard and protect your heart. The Bible says in the book of Isaiah chapter 26 verse 3, it says that, let's read that particular verse. Isaiah chapter 26 verse 3. The Bible says, you will keep in perfect peace those whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. So he will keep in perfect peace he whose mind is on him. And the ability for you to remain in the peace of the perfect peace of God is your mind to remain on the things of God. Are you understanding? So for you to remain in the place of perfect peace, let's go back to the book of Philippians chapter 6. Let's go to verse 8. What the Bible says. The things that we are supposed to think about that are going to enable us to remain in the place of what? Peace. And the Bible says that finally, brothers and sisters, whatever is true. So there are two things that you're supposed to put your minds on. Right? And it says whatever is noble. So there are noble things. And whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, and whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Hallelujah. So these are the things that we are supposed to put our mind on and our hearts on so that these things are dwelling in our hearts and we are continually thinking about them. So your heart has an ability to keep things and to keep peace. And this peace has an ability to protect you from matters of this world that robs us the peace, that put us in the place of anxiety. And this peace has an ability to guard us. But the thing that you have to do with your mind is to think about these kind of things. Hallelujah. So you have to think about these things in order for your mind to stay on God, protected by the peace of God, to continue remaining in the place of thinking right, remaining in the place of wellness. Hallelujah. Now, this is the time that you need to check about your life. Is there a place that you're confused? Is there a place that you're depressed? Is there a place that you're stressed? It is one thing that is missing, the peace of God. But there is a dimension now I want us to talk about as I finish. That Jesus said that you shall enter a house and you shall be able to leave the shalom of God. So there is a dimension that the peace of God can come into your life until you are able to leave the peace of God into people's life. You enter town, you enter city and you are able to leave the peace of God. Because you have come into the dimension of you being a carrier of the peace of God. Hallelujah. You can be able to distribute peace peace of God. You enter into a place. You enter into somebody's house and peace has come. It's not just Pastor Ken that has entered. It's not just Jambi that has entered in that house. But the shalom of God has come into that place. And the reason for them to receive the peace of God is on one thing. Them to receive you. Hallelujah. Is that in the Bible? So if they receive you in a territory, they are able to receive the peace of God and you are able to leave them. So it is upon you to leave the peace of God in a particular place that you enter. Are we understanding? So what God says when Jesus says, peace I leave you, it means that there's a dimension that you can grow and be able to carry the peace of God and be able to be able to distribute the peace of God in places. Hallelujah. It is not just about you being peace because we, a place that we have talked about is a place of you be able to come in the place of becoming the peace. Now there is a dimension of you being able to exhibit the peace of God by distributing it. You enter a place, the peace of God has entered in that place. You go into a place, the peace of God has come into that land. The peace of God has entered in somebody's life, in somebody's house. Now there is another that dimension that the Bible says in the book of Matthew that blessed are the peacemakers. Hallelujah. There is a dimension of doing what? Making peace. Now you are not just somebody that carries peace. 
Now you have entered in the place of making peace. So you are able to be able to make peace in the lives of people. You entered into a place, there is no peace, nothing is happening. But you enter in that place and you do your thing because you carry the ability of peace. You carry peace within you. And you are able to make peace where there is no peace. Hallelujah. Am I speaking to somebody? Now God wants you to be that person. You are not just thinking about doing things. You are not just having the peace, but you are a carrier. And you are able to distribute it. Sawa, sawa. But there is also a dimension of you entering into places that there is no peace at all. There is no peace at all. There is chaos. There is violence. There is wickedness. But you come into that place and you are able to make peace in the place that is no peace. Hallelujah. And the thing that God wants us to be able to exhibit peace is by carrying the good news. You cannot be able to be a peacemaker until you have something that you carry, which is the good news of Jesus Christ. It is the good news of Jesus Christ that has an ability to make peace in the lives of people. And I think some people miss in the prayer, they think that it's about just people fighting. But there is a dimension that you need to understand about how God now defines the place that we're supposed to enter peace or violence or wickedness. It is when people don't, do, don't know Jesus Christ, they, God considers them as people that don't have peace. Hmm? It's not just people fighting. It's not just people agree. But when you enter into a place that people don't know Jesus Christ, you are able to make peace in that land. By you speaking, you are making peace. By you speaking to them about the gospel of Jesus Christ, you are making peace in that particular territory. Hallelujah. So have we understand? Are we understanding something? So you came to the place of knowing what? Knowing the peace of God. Sawa, sawa. Now you're thinking. The peace of God has guarded your heart. And now you're thinking about these things. Things that are noble. Until you have become the peace of God you are carrying. You are, an, you are an ambassador of the peace of God. And now you are able to enter territories and the places and you are able to make peace in the places where there is no peace. Because anybody that does not know Jesus is a person that does not have peace in his life. Do you remember the point that I said the peace, the peace, there is a place that I said the peace from God and the peace of what? Did you write? The peace of God, the peace with God. So any person that does not go God, no Jesus, that does not have Jesus in their life, is a person that is separated. And there's no peace in their life. There's no peace with God with them. Therefore, they don't know peace. They are troubled. And I said, started by saying that money, things, wealth, does not define that we have peace of God. It's not a sign that we have found peace. But when you are with Jesus. Now this is the place that we say that the, the peace with God. You have peace with God. And you are able, when you are able to distribute the peace of God, you are able to bring people into the peace of God through Jesus Christ. Because the gospel is a message about one person, Jesus. Are we understanding? So through Jesus Christ, you are able to make peace, to bring people in the place of having peace with their God. Are we together? So where God has positioned you is a mandate, is a call for you to come and be able to make peace, make peace in the lives of people. And let God have, let God have a place in the lives of people by them being reconciled to their God, by them having a relationship with God, by them knowing God, because you are there to make peace. You are an ambassador of peace. Hmm? There is a time in this, I'm sorry I'm mentioning this in this time, but there's a year 207. Two people could not listen one another. And they kept on arguing and arguing and until somebody came from Ghana and came in this country and were able to make two people that could not reason just reason. He did not come with money. He did not come with things. He did not come with anything. He just came and said, you sit here, you sit here. Let's talk. Hallelujah. And by the end of that conversation, there was peace. And things were signed. And the nation came together. One man one man and it was not just about two people every the whole nation was in chaos but one person came one person came you can imagine if you can be this one person in that territory what god can do or can use you to do in the particular territory that god has placed you one person in a nation with 40 million people just came one person with no money no nothing he just came and talked between two leaders let's do this and every nation and the nation was on silence and reconciled and we lived with the terms that he came with. 
Are we understanding? That is the thing that God is calling us to be makers of peace. Where there's no settlement. Where there is chaos. You can be a maker of peace. You can tell people, no, this is the language of the king. Because when now you are able to think about these things and your heart is able to carry peace, you're able to speak what you're carrying. Because from your heart, you can be able to speak what is from your heart. Hallelujah. So let, ha let the peace of God have a place in your life. And then you can be able to talk about things that are of peace. And you can be able to be able to display the peace of God. Until peace has found settlement in your life, there is no way that you can be able to be a distributor of peace. Hallelujah. Even as you serve God, let there be peace. Things will honor and submit you because you're peace. You're a peaceful man. There is a place that we used to go and preach and that there is a particular man of God. I remember he used to preach and go for crashes. And one night he told me, you know, in the village, there are dogs. Eh? If family, people really, really, really are, or really keep uh, dogs for security purposes. So what happens at night, they let lose their dogs. So this man, you know, he moves from like, those are the people that understand from here to town. That's where he stays, like in town, and he was ministering here, or he had a kesha here. So one day, he just moves. And do you know what was happening? Is that people, when they're moving at night, we would hear cases of... Uh, uh, people were bite by dogs but for him there was no any case of dogs and I asked him what do you do? He told me let's walk by night and when dogs were coming violently they want to bark and bite him. Do you know what he said? And the dogs would be quiet and begin to shake their taste and they said, go home, go home go home, go home, go home, go home, go home, go home and the dogs would leave him and he go home because he was a carrier of peace what was the difference between him and the other people? Because they was carrying violence. You see a dog? Even me, before I met this person, I was, when I walked at night, I used to carry something. Runk. Eh? Just in case a dog appears. And I killed a number of dogs. Eh? People's dogs. But when I understood, I said, what is wrong? This man, one, the only thing that he carries is a Bible. Walking around. And the dog's back, he just stands. He doesn't run. Ah. Just stand. And the dog came back until here. He stops. He said, Calm down, calm down. He began to shake the tail. Ah, go home. Go home in peace. He goes, No prayer, no nothing. Because he was a carrier of peace. You can be able to manifest the peace of God until animals can be able to see the peace of God in you and they submit territories. Hmm? You enter into that house, you enter into that family. You're doing things. Things were cracking and falling apart, but you're just touching something that was not working. A radio that was not turning on, you touch like this. A switch that was not working, touch, touch it like this and goes on. Because you carry the peace of God and things can be able to heal the stillness and the peace of God. Remember the place that Jesus spoke the peace is what? To the storm. Peace, be still. It was not to people, but to what? To storms. To the sea. Let there be still. The waters were troubled by something was happening. But the peace be still. And there was stillness. You can be able to do something with your life. Do not despise the salvation that you have received. Because one thing that you realize from the salvation, you can be able to bring, as I said yesterday, uh, on Wednesday, that you can be able to distribute the salvation of God to whatsoever. Now you realize there is also a language of peace that you can be able to bring uh, to a territory, to things into your life. You went to a place, a place that looks chaotic. People are not accepted. People cannot enter. People cannot live in those places. But you went and there is, there is peace. Hallelujah. There is what? The peace of God. But it has to come from the place of your heart and your mind. Every day you're thinking about just things, noble things. Sawa, sawa? You're thinking about things that are upright. So there are things that are upright. There are things that are noble. There are things that are just. And your mind is cons consistently on that things. You're thinking about the things of above. You're not thinking about the worries of this life. You're not thinking about the troubles of tomorrow. You're not thinking about the things that are happening in this nation. But your mind is of above. Because the Bible says that you are from above. The Bible says in the book of Colossians that Papa taught us the other day. He said that things about things that are from above. Where Christ is seated. So put your eyes. Put your eyes. Put your eyes. So what you look at has an ability to hold your mind. Right? 
the things that you watch, there are things that you keep on thinking about. What you see daily, what you watch daily, has an ability to cause you to think about something. If your mind and your eyes are constant, constantly on Christ, you are able to generate a mind. If your eyes are constantly on Christ, you are able to generate a mind. A mind that thinks about things where Christ is, the things that are upright, the things of nobleness, the things that are just. And from that, your heart is full of what? Peace. And every trouble goes away. Listen, you can, have, you can be living a life that has no money. You can be jobless. You can have this and this issue. But peace can bring stability into your life. Hallelujah. As I said before, it is not material thing that can be able to bring peace. But there is a peace of God in your life that just brings people. Ah, can you send me one million? You don't have one million, but you're okay. Yes, somebody has one million, they are troubled. Hmm? You may, some of you, you may not have a car, but you're okay. As if somebody that has a car, because the peace of God is in you. The peace of God. Because of continually putting your mind on the things of God. Thinking about the things of God. And then you are able to manifest the peace of God. You are able to be a distributor of the peace of God. And you are able to be a maker of peace. Hallelujah. Can we read about that verse that says, Blessed are the peacemakers. In the book of Matthew. Blessed are the peacemakers. Matthew chapter 5. Blessed are the peacemakers for they will be called children of God. You see, automatically when you are able to be a maker of peace, there is a place for you. You found an identity. Hallelujah. You find an identity in God because you are able now to be called a child of God. So outside of peace, it says any man that has no peace is not a child of God. Hallelujah. But immediately there is a peace of God within you and you are able to distribute and make peace in place that you find an identity in God because you now become what? A child of God. Hallelujah. Are we blessed? Are we blessed? Go into your house. Go into a place that God has positioned you and be a peacemaker. Distribute the peace of God. But it has to start, as I said before, let the peace of God guard your heart. Let the peace of God guard your mind. And think about the things of above thinks about the things that are right, things that are nobleness, things that are pure. They are pure things that you need to position your heart on. Put your mind on. Things about them, things that are right. In this season when I'm walking around, I hear people, some people are already just tense, worried, worried. worried. You, you, can just, you can just be a vessel that the enemy wants to use. Tension and worriedness. You know? Do you know what happens when you worry? When you begin to walk in the place of anxiousness, now, this is one thing that happens. Is that you rob yourself from being somebody's son and you begin a master of yourself. Because you want to show yourself that you can be able to take it, to be in charge of things. Are you understanding? When you are anxious about matters of this life and troubled about matters of this life, you rob God his right over your life. And you begin to manifest yourself as the person that is you know, in charge of your life. You're in charge of yourself. And they position you in the place of wandering, jumping up and down. The, the, the unfortunate thing is, when you position yourself as in charge, it robs you one thing, because you cannot be able to distribute or take care of yourself. Are you understanding? So when you begin to worry, you position yourself higher, yet you cannot be able to afford the things that you need. So what happens is that you end up in the place of what? Depression. It settles in the place of what? Anxiousness. Because you position yourself as a leader, as a master of yourself, yet as a master you don't have a source of bringing things into your own life. And then because now you begin to think, no, I'm a lord of myself, I'm a master of myself, but you cannot find the answers to the things about your own life. I'd rather submit under God and tell you, no God, I don't know about this life. But as the Bible says, pray about everything and be thankful. Thank you, God, that today I'm here, I'm standing. You know? Thank you for the life. Thank you for the clothes. Thank you for giving me legs that can be able to walk. Instead of positioning myself in the place of wondering, why don't I have a car? Why don't I have this one? But I want to position myself in the place of God. You know it well. You care about me. You brought me in this world and you have everything for me right. The only thing that I need to pray is to pray. God, thank you. Thank you for life. Thank you. 
Thank you for taking of the care of my bills. Thank you for taking of my family. Thank you for everything. Thank you even in this season. This season shall pass away. And there's a season of you every day. And even this season, you are with me in this boat. Hallelujah. You are with me in this life. And I shall not my miscarry the goodness that you have for me. I shall not abort the best thing that you have for me. Hallelujah. How many of you that go to situation and say, God, even in this situation, there's something that you want me to learn. Because in every situation, there is something for you to learn. Don't just say, I'm just going through stuff. I'm going through stuff. I'm going through stuff. Look in that, in that particular situation. There is something for you to learn. And for that particular thing that God has enabled you to see, thank God for God. God, even in this situation, there is some goodness. Hmm? I'm developing patience. In this, you know, I'm developing myself. I'm growing in faith. Hallelujah. And you shall see the, God, the peace of God manifest. Because trouble shall be something of another day. You know, never think about trouble because your heart is pure and your heart is concentrated on what? Good things. Things that are pure. Noble things. Matters of the kingdom. Matters of God. The things that God is doing into your life, in your territory. Oh God, thank you. We have come this far because of your help. Don't think down. God, now I'm in this situation. It is not working. No, thank God. God, you are with me since I was born until I'm turning today and I'm in this season. You have brought me this far and even this season shall pass away and praise be to your name. Thank you. Your heart, you see yourself that you never see trouble in your heart. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do we love Jesus? Put your hands together for Jesus. So as you go home, think about this thing, three things. The peace from God is a gift. The peace with God, relational. And the peace of God. This particular peace of God is the one that transcends all understanding. And I said, there's one thing about peace that it stands and you cannot be able to explain. You cannot be able to explain. How comes you go far, you are like this and yet you are okay. And you can tell them, I, I don't understand even me. Because you cannot be able to explain. How comes so and so you are like this? You don't have a car, but you just look like you have a car and you have everything and the bills are okay. And you tell them one thing is that the peace of God, which I can never be able to explain. I don't know how I'm okay in this situation. Hallelujah. Because the peace of God has found expression in your life. We are in this season. It's the time for the church to pray and to concentrate on the peace of God. In this season. Not in the place of people, what people are commenting on Facebook. I was telling somebody, I don't want to hear what people are saying on Facebook and social media because they want to supply to me things and I don't want to buy them. Hallelujah. But my heart is concentrated on the things of God. What, are you, what is God saying about this situation? What is God saying about this season? And my heart is there to pray. Oh God, thank you. We are in this situation. I refuse to be anxious about anything. I refuse to be troubled. And every time I enter, even the other day I met with somebody, the, the, the man that stands in our gate, I said, you know what? Don't put your hand. I saw him on phone every time. I left. I came back from. Don't put yourself in this thing that you keep on watching a little bit. You put yourself in the place of anxiousness and robe you peace. Just focus on better things. Hallelujah. The same with, thing with you. Focus on better things. And in this season, you are praying and focus on the things that you're praying for. We pray for peace. Focus on peace. We're praying for the, the, the love of God, the unity of God. Focus on that thing and stop thinking about issues, the things that people are talking about, the problem that people are distributing to us. Let us not buy them, but we focus on what? The peace of God. Hallelujah. And we continue also supplying the same peace. You enter the place and say, ah, there's nothing to worry about. There's nothing to worry about. Focus on God. Let's pray. Tell people, let's pray. Let's focus on God. If somebody was thinking about doing something, you see there's no need I, I, I give an example. Yesterday as well, I was walking somebody and I happened to carry somebody along as I was going home. And he began to tell me, you know, in this election, so and so, so and so, so and so, so and so. That guy, ah, my friend. I didn't know him. I began to, my friend, what, why are you troubled for? Eh? Is he your brother? Is he your sister? What do you want? Peace. What do you want? To continue, you know, progress. Is that what you want? Yes, focus on that thing. Pray about it. Why are you fighting? It's violent. Who is supporting who? No, no, no. Not me. I don't like people that are No, no. What? Do you have clothes? Yes. Do you buy them from somebody? Would you want that person to continue selling clothes? Yes. Because you need clothes. Do you need food? Yes. Would you want somebody to continue selling food? Yes. 
then look at the better thing. Don't stop looking about things that can divide you for nothing. Hallelujah. And you begin to bring peace. When, when, when we are, I was dropping that guy, he was, hey, you're a good guy. Eh? But they have seen something. I've, I've realized something. If he was planning to go and cause violence, it's aborted. Hallelujah. We have aborted something by language, by distributing peace, speaking the peace of God. Hallelujah. In this season, may you be somebody that is a maker of peace. Be somebody that channels peace. Exhibit the peace of God in every situation, in territories, any place that God has positioned you. I pray for you today that you shall arise and begin to be a channel of the peace of God. And the people shall see you and they have, shall feel and shall know that the peace of God has come in that particular place. Hallelujah. Stand on your feet. In this time, I just wanted to speak to God. Maybe you are one of the people that were anxious. You are troubled about these matters of life. You are troubled about the needs of life. You are troubled about your tomorrow. This is your time to pray and tell God. You have said, I shall not be anxious. I refuse to be anxious. I refuse any spirit of fear and anxiousness. Anything that positions me in the place of timidity, that rose me of you, rose me of dependence on you. Oh God, let it be removed today. I refuse to be anxious. I refuse to be troubled. I refuse to be worried. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. Sabarabada bagada bagada. Sata bagata basapara bashata. Raka sabala bashata. Now you are going to pray that the peace of God shall guard your heart, the peace of God shall guard your mind, the peace of God shall guard this land. Let the peace of God be made manifest in this season in the name of Jesus. Let the peace of God take over our streets, our cities, our 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 our, our, our estates. Let the peace of God penetrate. Let the peace of God find entrance in the hearts and the lives of men. Wherever we live, wherever we are, let the peace of God be distributed as you pray. Lift our
presence of God in this nation. Any place that the enemy wanted to cause violence, to cause evil, to cause storms in this nation in the name of Jesus, we command stillness. We arrest in the name of Jesus any and we abort every agenda of the enemy to cause evil in this land and in this season. Any tension of the enemy, we abort it in this land and over our life in the name of Jesus. Is there somebody to pray? Yes. Is there somebody to pray? Yes. Lift our voice and begin to pray. Let everything of evil that is of the storm, of tension, of confusion, of violence in the name of Jesus, we reject it in the name of Jesus. We reject it in the name of Jesus. We abort every program of the enemy to cause evil in the name of Jesus. We command sinless in our sins, sinless in our life, sinless in this nation. Let there be sinless and somebody pray. point to your prayer. God, make me a vessel of peace. Make me a vessel of peace. Make me a channel of peace. Make me an ambassador of your peace. With the good news that I shall be a vessel of peace all over the nations, all over the places that you position me. Let me be a channel of peace in the name of Jesus. Speak to God. Live to God. <laughs> spoken today I need this peace of God the peace within me the peace between me and God by knowing and accepting the Lord Jesus into my life you're saying I would love to have the peace with God and it is my time and I'm saying it it is my time lift your right hand and say 
lift your right hand if you're here and you have not accepted Lord Jesus into your life and you want to take this opportunity to say I want to have peace with God I want to have peace with God today is your day today is your moment this is the time that God wants to have peace with you you're here you're saying I want to have peace with God if you all born again let's celebrate Jesus put your hands together for Jesus I decree and declare in the name of Jesus in this season that the peace of God shall reign into our life yes. the peace of God in our families the peace of God in our careers and everything that concerns us we decree and declare the peace of God in the nation of Kenya yes. that where the enemy had intended to cause violence yes. to cause evil in this land yes. to cause panic cause struggles, to cause any issues yes. of weakness in this land. We have put them in the name of Jesus. Yes. And we decree and declare the peace of God that transcends, that surpasses all understanding yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes. Let the peace of God reign. Yes. Let the peace of God reign in our hearts. Yes. Let the peace of God reign in our leaders. Yes. Let the peace of God reign in this election yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes. Let the peace of God take over. Yes. Where there were issues, where there were discouragement, dis disagreements, yes. where our misunderstand misunderstanding. Yes. Yes. We are brought them in the name of Jesus. Yes. And we decree the peace of God. Yes. Let the peace of God reign yes. in the hearts yes. and the minds of God, in the yes. minds of people. In the name of Jesus. Let the peace of God take over. Yes. The peace of God in all corners of this nation. Yes. The peace of God in all matters of this nation. Yes. The peace of God in all people that are that are, that are, that are handling the matters of election. Yes. Let the peace of God reign yes. in the name of Jesus. Yes. We cut off any hand of tension, yes. any hand of violence, yes. we cut off in the name of Jesus. Yes. Let it be cut off in the name of Jesus. Yes. And we decree and declare let the hand of God of peace and perfection in this country reign in the name of Jesus Christ. We pray and believe. Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. It is a joy, it is a blessing to have you here. Don't walk in fear. Don't walk in tension, but walk in the peace of God. Declare the peace of God where you live and where you stay. And tell people every time that God is in charge. The only thing we need to do, let's pray and trust in God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a time in this atmosphere you can go ahead and sow your seed. If you're tithing, come in front. If you're tithing, if you're sowing, grab your seed and let us sow. Let us sow in this atmosphere. And if you're tithing, you can come in front. Amen. Ifania Amani. Amen. Ifania Amani. Kaondoa. Huzu ni yangu. Kanifania Amani. Amen. Ifania In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare for every tithe in this house and even those that are tithing online for the reason of your giving in this altar, I decree the covering of God upon your life. I write on the grace upon my father and declare the blessing of God upon your life that whatever was meant for evil, I declare the peace of God into your finances, the peace of God into your life and everything that concerns you. Let the peace of God settle. Let the peace of God guard your mind and guard your heart. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Father, I thank you for every sower. By their connectivity to this altar, we pray the peace of God upon them. The peace of God in their families, the peace of God in their businesses, the peace of God in all matters in their lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen and amen. Come and so. Nija kupita kwenye bonde la mauti. Sita ogopa mana wewe ukona mi. Gongo la kona fimbo yako. Ebo na vya nifariji. Wanifanyi amani. Nija kupita kwenye bonde la mauti. Ebona vyani fariji, 
Amenifanyia amani tuseme sisi wote amenifanyia amenifanyia amani amenifanyia naondoa huzunia we bless the name of the living god i take this opportunity if you're visiting us for your first time lift your right hand up we see you let's put our hands together for our visitors maranatha Put your hands together for our visitors. Go to them, say hi to them. Say hi to our visitors. Those that are visiting us for the first time, say hi to them. Now visitors you can come to us this side as we close the prayer. Visitors come here. Our visitors Before you go home you just have one or two words with Minister Papetua. This is Minister Papetua. So you have one word with Minister Papetua and we celebrate and love God for you for bringing you. We would love to know you, to walk with you, to pray with you and to see God do wonders and signs in your life and you to testify as well. Hallelujah. So grab the hand of your neighbor. Let's hear share their grace. Now as we pray this prayer of the grace you are talking to them sawa sawa so the grace of our lord jesus christ goodness and mercy along with somebody and let's speak the message of peace in this nation see you on sunday god bless you shalom